Paul, first of all, commiserations about your recent situation with Staley Bridge Celtic. What I and the viewers will want to know is, how did it come about? We got a phone call yesterday morning, obviously the game was off on Tuesday evening, um, just informing us that the football club was uh, dispensing of minor Stephen services. Um, come a bit of a shock, but hey, that's football. Now, obviously, Steve Burst took over his return to Celtic, and I've read some comments online, and you feel a bit aggrieved that he's come or returned in the manner that he has. Can you elaborate on that for us? I don't elaborate too much, but all I would say is, whenever we've moved about in football, or myself and Stephen, or we've gone into management roles, we've always found that we've always approached the people that take it over, and we've always tried to be up front as possible with people, and. Without, listen, football's football, everyone knows that what goes on behind the scenes with players, managers, we can take that. But I just think in some cases, and this being one, that the respect shown for myself and Stephen has been zero. Now, you took on the role in September and you inherited a squad which had lost seven of their opening eight league games. Now, you had a big job to turn it around. You brought in a lot of fresh new faces to the squad, the majority of them coming from Ashton United. Do you felt that they could have saved Celtic's season? Yeah, I th listen, I think there's a massive over-egging of who we brought in from Ashton United. No matter which manager you look at and which manager you look if a, if a successful manager goes to another club, whether it be in the Premier League or the non-league, you always find that it takes a nucleus of good players out of the nose. At the end of the day, when we went to Celtic, a lot of the money that we had on the budget was already tied up with contracted players who, with no disrespect at the time, were not pulling up trees. So we had a very limited budget for what we could get and where we could go for players that had been successful around this area. And one of the teams that, obviously, lucky enough to be successful was Ashton United. It was no disrespect to them, but it was just a footballing matter that a lot of the good players and the players that we knew and what they could be capable of were situated there. But if you look at the other players, we took players from... We did sign a lot of players, but if you look at the injuries we had, I don't think we had any luck. We had a lot of injuries. We had players, obviously, Keel went last week, we lost Fraser off or before. And in football, you need you need a bit of luck, and we never, we never had the luck that hopefully would have got us out of mm -hmm. it. But... Saying that, we still wasn't we're still in a better situation now than it would have been three or four months ago if they would have stood still and kept the players on board, and that's no disrespect to the previous regime either. And from my personal perspective, looking at the squad that you did assemble, it looked as if if you hadn't stayed up this season, then you could have made an instant return next season. It looked that strong. Yeah, well, in football, you always need to plan ahead, and some people didn't really recognise that at the football club. We wanted to sit down with the directors and say to them, plan A is we stay in this football league, we have a good goal next year, we sprinkle the current squad with probably two, three, four players maximum, tie the ones down that we think can cope in this league, or if not, we go down, we'll probably have a less budget, which you expect, but let's get the players now who we feel that can really push us on and get us back up at the first attempt, tied down, and we've got a bit of continuity going forward into next season, and that wasn't forthcoming, that's where the alarm bounds start ringing. So just what was the situation when you took control back in September? You said online that a lot of players were on big contracts, on big money. Can you elaborate on that for us? I'm not going to start going into money side of it because it won't be fair on the football club and it won't be fair on the individuals, but... There was, there was a lot of players there that were on a lot of money and were just sat on the contracts and they'd be quite happy to sit on the contract. It didn't matter to them that whether they went down, didn't turn up on a Saturday. And it was hard then to shift shift some of them about and get players in that recognised the way me and Stephen wanted to play football, the way he wanted to take the club forward. And to put that stamp on a football club, that's been, no disrespect again, in decline for... Mm -hmm four or five years when the, when teams of Kidderminster, Salford, Darlington, Halifax, Altrincham come into this league with big money to put your stamp on a team halfway through the season as other clubs are finding out is a hard, hard task. Now, do you think it's disrespectful of me to say that Staley Bridge Celtic are a small club in the National League North? Because, as you mentioned then, there's a lot of big clubs now in the division. You've got AFC Fylde, Kidderminster, Harriers, Darlington and, of course, Stockport County. Do you think that's a bit disrespectful of me? Given the right opportunity and given the, the time to turn it round, sometimes, as a football club, 
you need to hit rock bottom to bounce up and get back where you are. I think Staley Bridge, the best finish they've had is, is 12 over the last five seasons. Most of the time they've been finishing fourth, fifth bottom. And it's not good enough for the club that size. It's, it's, a, it's a brilliant football club, let me put that on record. It's a great football club with some great, great people involved in the running of it. But we would probably would have to go down to bounce back up where I wanted to be or been given the opportunity of a pre-season to bring our right players in who we think could have obviously pushed us on in the league because we didn't want to come into the club and even though it is a, it's a small club now compared to some of the big clubs in that league as you mentioned not just on the pitch but off the pitch financially but we think given the right time and the patience of certain people we'd have and, and, and people were seeing improvements people could see improvements I know you come down to the games I know other people um, you've seen people and I've had a lot, a lot of messages saw Stephen saying how, how much they're surprised by this because I think we went to Stockport on Saturday, first half, 30 minutes, you expect them to have a really good goal, which they did do. Second half, I think we controlled the game, and if we, w if we would have scored goals when we should have and the penalty didn't go in, which changes the game, it's another point on the board, but it wasn't to be. And just with regards to the Stockport game, of course you did lose that one 3-1, but before that you went four games unbeaten, so it looked as if you were taking the squad in the right direction, which I guess makes the sacking all the more surprising. Yeah, it was a real shock, but I, th I think if I'm, if I'm open and honest, and people open and honest at the football club, this was done two weeks ago, and the, uh, that 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 was my biggest bugbearer with what's going on. If if people had done open and honest and come to me and said, we don't feel like you're getting us anywhere. You don't feel like the team's improving, which anyone that witnessed it and anyone that knows about football could see that could see the difference between nine ten weeks ago. And that's with industry indus, injuries and all the problems that we had going forward. But it, like I say, it wasn't to be not not for want of trying. Me and Stephen can look at ourselves and say that we put our heart and soul into trying to get that club back where it should be, but we wasn't given the patience or given the time of certain people to do that. Now, I think it's fair to say that you came to the club with a somewhat fraught reputation because of a previous incident involving the Celtic fans. Do you have a message for the Staley Bridge Celtic supporters? Because looking online, it looks as if they're really gutted for you. You know, Do you have a, a message for them? Yeah, listen, I, I, I want to thank them all, and I've, I've tried to thank as many Bish, Trudge, the kit men who are a big parts of the team. We've tried to thank them all, I really have, and you can't go around. And people, probably some people think it's sour grapes. It's not sour grapes. If we'd have walked in that football club, and people say it's a, it's a it's results game, which is a results game, but sometimes you've got to look at the bigger picture. Um, but I want to thank them. I want to thank them all, the, the true supporters, the ones that come, come out. And I hope myself, probably more than Stephen, because Stephen have anything to tarnish him when he walks into the club and it was myself more than anything. I just hope that they look at me now in a in a better light. I did make mistakes, but by all means I made mistakes going as a player, but who doesn't? As a manager, I try to conduct myself best I can. I probably lost, lost my rag a couple of times, but that's the way it is. It's just the, the will to win. And they'll never take that away from me because that's a part of my makeup and it's part of Stephen's makeup and that's what's made us, hopefully, and will make us successful in the future. And as far as you and Steve are concerned, what does the future hold? Will we see you back in the dugout very soon? I ain't got a clue, I to say. It's going to have to be the right job going forward. Um, there's not a lot of right jobs out there at the moment, but we're on the dole. Not on the dole in a bad way, we've obviously we've both got jobs, but we've all been involved in football since a young age, since we were 13, 14, both together. And, Hopefully, there's something out there that be able to push us forward. I know that we've got a lot to give, and I know I've learned a lot of lessons from the last four months that will stand us both in good stead, being better managers, and hopefully it can uh, go on to being a good football team that comes back and uh, does stuff that we can both be proud of. Paul, it's been a pleasure speaking to you this morning, and uh, the best of luck with the future. Thank you very much. Cheers, Paul.